Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. We are moving on to fall and Simplicity is the first pattern company to drop their fall collection. So if you've never seen one of these videos before, this is basically where I go through each and every pattern um, and just kind of chat about it. I give my um, thoughts on fit and fabric choices and um, just kind of like my overall impression of the pattern. It's kind of like sitting at Joanne looking through the pattern books with a friend. So sit back, um, relax, leave some comments on your thoughts for um, this collection and we're off. Okay, so all I did was make sure that we were looking at the paper patterns and this was going to be Simplicity Fall. That way I wouldn't get confused. Okay, so first up, starting things off with their little unisex pattern, which normally this is at the very end of the thing at the collection. So they must have high hopes for this one to do really well. I can kind of see why initially, but let's let's see what the details have to offer us. Okay, so we've already done the format. Sizing. Alphanumeric sizing, all the sizes in one, extra small to 2X. Create these easy to sew oversized knit hoodies for men and misses. Hoodies come in short or long sleeves and have seam details. View B has sleeve bands, hem band, and also slits at the elbow. Very um, street wear inspired, I guess. Um, but you've got your hoodie. You've got a drop shoulder. You've got all these pieces that go to your sleeve. You've got like an under sleeve and then one, two, three parts to the upper sleeve with this little cutout or with a short sleeve. Very cute. I mean, not much to say whenever it comes to fit. It's supposed to be oversized. I do wonder if they will be offering a, um, like a jogger pant or something to complement these to make it like a set. Yep, it looks like they used a sweatshirt fleece, which is pretty on the inside and outside. However, I stand corrected because this seam is not exposed. So this is a lining. Hmm, okay. Here, <laughs> this, I don't know, this shot looks a little bit funky. The length, I think, no matter whether you're making this for man or missus, um, the length is hitting at a weird spot on both. Uh, you know what I mean? Like the, the missus, well, the one that they have styled on the missus um, without the band is a little bit more my style, but then again, I'm a pear shape. So it depends on what you like, but this just looks a little bit funky from the back. Maybe also just like how he's holding his arms, but yeah, another lining in here. Okay. So the Back of the envelope is stretch knits only, such as double knit, ponte, sweatshirt fleece, and terry knit. So they don't mention anything about a separate lining fabric. So the hoods are double, like double the thickness of whatever you choose. Not my favorite. I'm, I gotta start looking at some hoodies in the stores, like, and seeing, are they lining all their hoodies? I don't think so. I think that's like a sewing thing for some reason. I don't love a lined hoodie. It just gets so heavy. Um, okay, and since this is uh, unisex, we're just going to go by, I guess they're using the men's measurements, really. Um, body measurements. Oh, okay, okay, wait. Body measurements and their ranges because it's alphanumeric. Okay, that makes more sense. And then the finished measurements. Oof. Roomy. I mean, they did say oversized, so I'm going to give them some grace whenever it comes to this, but a 16 inch, uh, what's it called? Uh, ease, 16 inches of ease is kind of a lot, kind of a lot, especially if you're full chested and you're basing this off of your chest measurement, then it's going to be even bigger everywhere else. So yeah, I don't know. I think you could probably size down a whole bunch. Let's see. I would normally be in the medium category, but I could make an extra small. Maybe like one or two sizes down. Yeah, for sure. If I made an extra small, then I would have six inches of ease. So still, that's actually kind of pretty semi-fitted. So I would just do one size down. 
Okay, and is that all they're gonna give us? Yes, I guess so. All right, basic, easy, simple, hence the name, simplicity. Um, good start. All right, so this is a Mrs. and Women's dress in three lengths. So we are gonna have sizes 10 to 18 and 20 to 28. Fitted dress with flared sleeves, has vertical seams, invisible zipper, cape effect back. Can't wait to see that. Belt can be self-made or purchased. Views B and C have front slit. Separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. B, C, and D for misses, and C, D, and double D for women's. Nice. That's that seems like they went the extra mile. Okay, so yeah, flared sleeve, basic you know, fitted sheath dress, really, with this, um, like, uh, exaggerated sleeve detail is really what it is. I do love the self-made belt. That This just looks very, um, like Kate Middleton, right? I can see her in something like this, maybe a little bit longer. They're not allowed to show their knees or something, right? Let's see the back. Show me, oh, very Kate Middleton. Okay, interesting. Interesting how this is also, I think what happens is this unzips, like you unzip the top part from like behind your neck and then you reach up under here and unzip the rest of the dress down to here. That's kind of thoughtful, but the cape is sewn in, so it's not going to come undone. Interesting, super cute, interesting um, design there. I love that. Um... Shally crepe, lightweight denim, linen types, poplin sateen, silky types. Yeah, lots of different fabrics there. Um, I don't know. When they say silky types, they must not be thinking of the same thing I'm thinking of when I think of silky types. Maybe they're thinking of like crepe back satin or something. I'm thinking of like when I see silky types, I think polyester. I think rayon. Um, I think things that are really, really drapey. And I think this has to have some structure to it, right? A little bit. I can't really see it in denim. Honestly, I can't really see it in linen either. Right? It's just linen is too loosely woven, in my opinion. Maybe some kind of blend. Mostly I see it in like, yeah, a crepe back satin. I just think Shally's too light. Poplin. I don't know. I'm not, yeah, I'm not really agreeing with these suggested fabrics. I'm picturing something a little bit more like suiting. Um, a little bit more structured, not as much drape. Um, it can be light to midway. It doesn't have to be like a wool or anything, but yeah, I'm definitely picturing something with a little bit more structure in it than some of these fabrics. And then you'll need an invisible zipper and a snap. That's it. Oh, and then the stuff for your belt. Okay, cool. Um, fitting wise... It looks like we have three and a half inches of ease in the bust, minimum, depending on what cup size you are. Um, and then at the waist, we've got two inches, okay. And at the hip, we've got three. So yeah, pretty fitted, like I said, sheath dress. All of those make perfect sense. Um, you're definitely going to fit for your cup size for sure. Um, and then blend from there. Very nice. So it's kind of like Selena Gomez there. Maybe like Selena Gomez's cousin. All right. Mimi's newest pattern. Mrs. Knit cardigan, tank top, and skirt. Sizing, we've got 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Slouchy fit cardigan has front button closure and wide sleeve and hem bands. Razorback tank top is cropped. Skirt with elasticized waistband and figure hugging, hugging fit comes in midi length with side slit. Okay, a little bit, you know, back to basics for Mimi. But it's definitely the silhouette she loves, right? Very fitted and then kind of like something big and slouchy and oversized kind of streetwear style over top of it. That makes perfect sense. What I'm really confused. Did her tattoos change? Oh no, this is the edge of that. Oh, okay. I was like, are those like words? And I was like, why are there no words over here? I'm so confused. Okay, sorry. Um, 
So yeah, kind of like a sporty, chic kind of look. And then you throw on the comfy cardigan to give yourself a little, um, a little cover up kind of. Yes. Oh, that's all we're going to get picture wise. We're going to get a picture of the back to see the racer back. I don't understand that when there's a detail that they call out in the back, like give me a picture of the back. Oh my gosh. Okay. Design wise, it's really just a drop shoulder kind of bat wing esque, um, cardigan. I'm sure you could make this into like a deep V pullover as well. If you wanted to skip the buttons on your sweater knit. And then we've got a tank top. Is this the back? Yeah, this is the racer back portion of the tank top. It's not too exaggerated. And then your elastic waist pull on skirt with the slit on the side seam. Very simple, basic, basic to sew. Stretch knit such as interlock jersey rib knit. See pick a knit rule. That would be nice if you would include the pick a knit rule on here somewhere um, so we could see it online as well. And then for view A, you can also, in addition, and this is would be referring to the cardigan, use a ponty knit or a sweater knit. And she opted for a sweater knit, obviously. I think for the under portion, I'm pretty sure she just used like a mid-weight cotton. But a rib knit would be really pretty too. Oops. I wasn't done. Okay. And then use about three buttons for the cardigan and elastic for the skirt. And then size wise, this should be pretty fitted except for obviously the cardigan. So the cardigan's going to be really roomy. Yeah. We've got 11 inches of ease there. Um, the only thing that looked a little bit odd to me was just how long the sleeve is. Like I would be pulling that up over my hand all day long. Um, so either the cuff is too big and it should be more fitted to your wrist and then have the slouch or the sleeve is just way, 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 way too long. So that's just, I think, probably a personal thing. Some people might like really long sleeves. Um, I just don't find them to be super comfortable. They get in my food and then they're, they hang down and then I don't want to have hands. <laughs> so that's, a, that's what I think when I see those really long sleeves. But, um... Width wise, circumference wise, yeah, you're going to have 11 inches of ease in the bust. And then the bust for the tank top should be negative, and it is by two inches. Perfect. So it's a negative ease. So it's going to stretch around your body. That's exactly what we want. Same thing for the hip, um, one and a half inches of negative ease. Great. All of that makes perfect sense. Um, if you don't want it to be that figure hugging, then you're going to have to size up. If you use a fabric that is stretchier than the pick a knit rule, then you will also need to size down. So it kind of depends on the look you want and also how stretchy your fabric is, which is why I wish they put the pick a knit rule thing, at least the percentage of stretch that you need for your fabric on here. So we could shop our stash or we could shop while we're waiting for these to arrive in the mail, but you kind of have to wait for them to get to you before you can buy fabric, which is kind of annoying. Um, okay, so yeah, that's it on this one. I feel like I preached and preached and preached about finished garment measurements, and then they finally put finished garment measurements on almost every single pattern. So if I keep preaching about stretch percentage, maybe, maybe one day we'll get that on the website as well. Okay, next up, we have Mrs. Dress, 8 to 16, 18 to 26 on the size range. V-neck dress with front and back gathers, have front keyhole opening with self ties, long sleeves with elastic, side seam pockets, length variations, and optional self tie belt. Okay, I mean, this is it, kind of basic. It feels like this is not re very revolutionary, right? Like it's been done before. Um, maybe in a ap uh, application for fall, you could have some like really pretty, like lightweight drapey fabrics. I will say these pockets are going to be floppy pockets, right? There's nothing to anchor them into. I would skip those. Floppy pockets are literally the bane of my existence. I don't understand them. You see them in ready to wear all the time. You see them in sewing patterns all the time. I just don't like how they, I don't, you can see them sometimes, especially in these drapey fabrics. They can add bulk. Like I just don't like it when it's not anchored to a waist seam and there is no waist seam here. So um, yeah, this longer version, which is what she's wearing. Yeah. Just in a print 
is really pretty with a boot. I will give them that. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with the, I don't know, at the same time, it's a kind of a classic, right? Like a long, drapey, silky dress in the fall with a boot, right? That kind of makes sense. But if you've been sewing for a while, you probably already have a pattern similar to this in your stash. Here's the back. So we've got a front yoke and a back yoke um, with all these gathers that create the volume for the skirt. This is a more appropriate kind of like, this one is, although elasticized at the C, at the hem, um, unlike Mimi's, which just had a cuff, but the length of this where it's not falling past your hand, I think makes more sense. This one's called a lantern sleeve, I think. Um, it is a little bit long in the shoulder, but only by like a schmidge. Um, and then if this were up on her shoulder, I don't know if you would still have all of these wrinkling issues here. It also does look like it was, it's a really small sleeve head for the sleeve opening that you were given. Um, so you might have some puckering issues whenever you sew this. So you could let that out a little bit if you wanted. Okay. So chambray, cotton blends, crepe machine, linen blends, and poplin, satin, and silky types. Ironically, like this is the one where I would have had like Shally listed. You know, where where is Shally? Um, they did include silky types, so whatever that means. But these more stable fabrics, I would use for the other dress. And the more drapey ones, I would pick for this one, you know? Um, all you need is a little bit of elastic, so very affordable to make. Um, and then very roomy everywhere. You can see how roomy this is. So you're going to pick based on your bust measurement. This one happens to have, whoa, 16 inches of ease. I know it's supposed to be roomy, but my gosh, that's real roomy. That's real roomy. You could definitely go down by half. Like you could have eight inches of ease and then still have like the trapeze look. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, you're probably going to want to pick your size based on your high bust measurement and then still calculate the ease and get somewhere closer to 8 or 10. 16 is a ton. Um, 16 in like a super full skirt at the hip makes sense, but not like head to toe. You're just drowning. She, I wonder if that's probably why they have her belted in every single one. Does that look like 16 inches of ease? I mean, maybe. But if you didn't want to wear it belted, which they are suggesting here, I just think 16, especially in something like a chambray, it would just be a tint. It would just be a ginormous tint. So consider your fabric choice. Um, consider your upper bust measurement before you pick your size on that. Okay, now we have... A cute little skirt. Sti oh, wait, sizing is, oh, this is Mrs. Ann Women. So we've got 10 to 18, 20 to 28, and 30 to 38. So you've only got five misses sizes. Like I'm a 22 at the hip in misses, but not a 22 in women's. Um, so this actually doesn't fit me, this skirt, technically. But you've got 10 sizes in women's. So this is more of a women's pattern to me with a few sizes for the middle range of Mrs. Sizing. Stylish skirts in knee or mid-calf length have front and back pleats, self belt, belt loops, invisible side seam zipper, front pocket with flap, and top stitching at hem. I'm looking for the pleats. Oh, the pleats are sewn down and then released. Okay. So kind of a take on a, not a, not necessarily like a schoolgirl skirt, but you definitely see these skirts that have these kind of pleats that go all the way up to the waistband. I guess those are just like pleated skirts. I don't know, but these are sewn down so the pocket can be sewn on top. Interesting. You've got a nice wide waistband, which I love. The top of the waistband sits at the natural waist. So that's not necessarily considered high rise. Um, probably mid rise, I guess. 
I'm looking at the styling. They put her in boots. They put her in like a little chunky um, loafer kind of thing. Huh. That's definitely hitting below her knee. Yeah, I think I just don't love this fabric choice. Maybe because it's shiny. It's showing like a lot of shadows and stuff that I, I wouldn't like to point out on my own body. Yeah, something like a twill, I think, would have been better, which I think is what they're trying to give here. Yeah, some a pop of color is obviously really stunning. Okay, here's the back. Yeah, the back looks good. The The waistband itself is not dipping. They could have done a little bit more to, like, to help style this belt, you know, so it doesn't look so messy. Um, maybe some more interfacing, you know, that would have helped. But other than that, everything about it looks really good. Again, I think this fabric, I don't know, something about the fabric's not sewing right. So I think that's mostly the issue there. But the fit of it, I think, looks really good. The silhouette is really nice. It's hitting at the right place in the body. I don't really see any fit issues. I think that's a fabrication problem. All right, so cotton tights, like denim, poplin, sateen, which may be what they use, like a thin sateen. And then silky types such as crepe, rayon, and satin. Ironically, they didn't mention twill, um, which is what I thought of immediately. But also suitings and all of that kind of stuff you could use too. And then, of course, you could definitely make this in the winter in some kind of wool and it would be adorable. All right, just an, a zipper. Seven inches for misses, nine inches for women. So, again, really affordable. You can splurge a little bit on your fabric here. And then because we have so many sizes, they're not going to give us finished garment measurements, which makes sense. But you're looking for the waistband to have maybe two inches of ease in it and then for everything to be kind of proportional below that. All right. So now we're on to tops. Yeah, this is kind of all feeling a little underwhelming, right? Like been there, done that, seen it before. What's that song? Been there, done that, messed around. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, another Mrs. and Women's combo, though. This one only has five sizes for each of them. So 10 to 18 and then 30 to 38. So they're skipping the 20 to 28 women's altogether. Interesting. Very interesting choices there. Button front blouses have collar shaped hem and sleeves with inverted pleats gathered into button cuffs or bands. Okay. It is a princess seamed, which is really beautiful, button front dress with or without like a hidden button placket. I think this is a two piece collar for sure. So the more difficult of all the collars. Then you've got a little bit of like a, uh, it's not really ruffled. It's just um, like a fuller shoulder here. This one actually fits really well on her, but a little too long on her. And it's usually the opposite. So that's interesting. But do you see how her shoulder, like the cap of her shoulder, should be in this poofy part? And it's not. It's right here instead. So just sh check your shoulder length. Um, and then you've got your sleeve with this three button band or this little single button band that I think is seven eighths length. And then also the curved hem. Yes. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the sleeve detail here. Taking in the shoulder though is super simple. You would just, you know, pull it out of this seam right here if you needed to shorten the shoulder length. And then you've got fisheye darts in the back, which I do really appreciate. The fit of this is going to be stunning. It's going to look like a million bucks on you. It's going to look really expensive. It's going to fit like a dream. I will say that. But it's still just a button front shirt. Like, again, I probably have four or five of these in my stash already. Um, if you've been sewing for a while, you probably have something similar. Um, really nothing, nothing new. Um, on this design, but they are suggesting lightweight denim, linen types, poplin, sateen, shirtings, and silky types. Okay, I agree with all of that. You also need buttons. Uh, quantity depends on the version you're making. And then, again, because of so many sizes, the finished garment measurements are going to be 
um, on in the instructions. So we get no info on that, but it will be beautiful. If you make it, it will fit really, really well. I can promise you that. Okay, here's Mimi's second pattern of the bunch. This is a Mrs. and Women's jumpsuit, really leaning into the combo Mrs. and Women's. This one has um, the 10 to 18 and the 20 to 28 size range. High collar jumpsuit with front zipper opening, has long sleeves. Let me read that again. High collar jumpsuit. It looks like a, like when you go parachute, no, when you, what's it called when you jump out of the airplane? Skydiving, when you go skydiving, it looks like that's the outfit they put you in. Um, front zipper opening has long sleeves with wide cuffs, shaped yoke, elastic at waist, pin tucks at leg. That's interesting. And side seam pockets. Okay, so high neck, high collar, which I don't know if she's going to show any pictures of this unzipped, but those do make really cute, interesting, like little lapels whenever you open them. Center front zipper. This is the seaming that they were talking about. That's also really kind of cool. And then elastic at the waist. Pin tuck on the front. Pretty. And then that's the wide cuff. Yeah, I do think that it fits her well. At first, I was going to say this looks a little too long, but the bodice, but I think she's just standing in a way when she stands with her shoulders back like she's obviously doing here. The length looks really good. Um, maybe a little bit long in the back, but the elastic is doing a lot of the work there to hold that up. And then as always, she has such a pretty shape on all her pants. If you have a full bum, um, she finds a way to put you in like casual clothes and still make your bum look good, not like diapers. So that's the side, that's the front. Yeah, that's all we're going to get. I don't understand the limited photos. I really don't. But the, the line drawing also makes it look so much more different. I'll look at the bigger line drawings here in a second. Um, stretch knits such as jersey, ponte, scuba, sweatshirt, fleece see the pick and knit rule. I do think that the drape of your fabric will determine a lot about fit. So if you use a drapier fabric, all of this would kind of like be more blousey. If you use a more structured fabric, this is going to stand away from your body a lot more. I don't know what she used. It looks like a sweatshirt fleece, but I don't know what weight of it it is. Um, but yeah, I think drape will play a big role in the outcome of this garment. You'll need a 28 inch number three zipper, which you just search like YKK number three and you can find those. Um, and then elastic, a lot of elastic, a lot of three eighths inch wide elastic. Um, okay, finished garment wise, we've got seven ish inches in the bust which I think has to account for this dolman sleeve. So that makes sense. And then the, and then the, the hip has 38, which is three and a half inches. So more fitted hip. And then the elastic is fitted based on the, the waist is fitted based on the elastic. Okay. This is what I wanted to see, right? The line drawing is significantly more appealing to me than the finished version. And I don't know why. And I don't know why. <laughs> May, mm, I can only think that it's because this feels too long and slouchy and bunchy. And especially, I know she can't help it, right? But this right here, that's bugging me to death. Um, I don't know if she has somebody take her pictures for, you, for her. If she puts it on a tripod and uses a timer, I have no idea. But... Maybe that, maybe the, the way that this is not blousing at all makes me think it's a little bit more clean. I don't know, but the shape of that leg is really, really pretty. Interesting. No doubt about it. That's like a pretty much a wearable onesie and um, you're going to be comfortable. If you travel a lot, that would be the perfect plain outfit. You would look put together, but still very, very comfortable and probably still very hot. Um... Okay, now we're back to tops. So we've got a 
Mrs. Top with sleeve variations. So 6 to 14, 16 to 24. This is the smallest, I think. I don't think Simplicity has a size 4. Um, so smallest of their size range. Easy to sew tops have v-neck line thanks to this surplus bodice. It's like a faux wrap. Um, elastic at waistline and flared hem like a peplum. View A top has sleeveless armholes finished with bias tape. View B has long sleeves with cuffs. View C has flutter sleeves. Okay, so like I said, surplus bodice, nice little facing here. Um, the crossover of this results in a V that's not too deep, not too high. It's really nice. Um, this looks like a piece of one inch elastic. So to me, albeit not, you know, revolutionary, that does make it a little bit more interesting than just if you had the little itty bitty elastic. I think the itty bitty elastic that we did like five, 10 years ago is a little bit dated, but this wider elastic looks pretty cool. And then this one has the long sleeve with the gathers into this really long cuff. Maybe it's this model. I haven't been paying attention to her face and seeing it's the same model everywhere. But do you see this bone right here? That's the top of her shoulder. So she has a really short shoulder length, I think, for a fit model anyways. And these were all made, you know, based on like industry standards, quote unquote. So all of her sleeves are ending up a little bit too long. Like this one needs to be somewhere in between this bone on top of her shoulder and the rest of it, especially if the sleeveless version does not have a separate bodice piece, then this is going to be, can you imagine a sleeveless version where this was the end of the sleeve? That would be so weird. It would need to be like this cut up into this way. So pay attention to that. Are we going to get any other cool photos? Oh, that outfit is kind of tragic. What What is that even? No. Okay, and no more pictures. Nothing of the back anyways. Um, yeah, just see how wide this looks? That doesn't feel right to me. I think that the... Is the neckline... Well, they don't show us the back. The neckline doesn't look too weird. It just looks very wide for a sleeveless top. Like, I want all of this to be cut in more. But anyways... Shally Charmeuse, cotton lawn, cotton blends, gauze, lightweight linen blends, poplin shirtings, wool. Yeah, all of that makes perfect sense. A quick and easy hack would be to make this into a dress. You would need maybe another half inch or half a yard of fabric. Um, and you could make it into a dress instead of having to worry about styling it. That's why I wear dresses so much, to be honest. You need elastic and bias tape and buttons, depending on buttons only if you make view B though. So it could be pretty affordable. Finished garment measurements for the bust is seven inches. Yeah, that's why it feels so wide. Um, I think you could reduce some of that in the back. Like maybe even if you just took a big slice out of the back here, you know, and made it more narrow that way. Obviously tissue fit, but yeah, I think you could reduce it by two or three inches and it wouldn't look or feel that strange at all. Maybe you take slices out of the shoulders to make them shorter. Do like a little V slice. I don't know, something. Um, and then the waist is elastic and the hip is so wide it doesn't really matter. So yeah, pretty roomy in the bust there. I think it's just really wide in the back if I'm being honest because it does look normal on her front. It's not gaping or anything. So I don't think that's it. I think the back is just too wide. Okay, what is next? Ooh, next we're into a jacket. It's been a minute since we've looked at any jackets, right? Simplicity, Mrs. Jacket in two links and the bag. What? Okay, 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Again, smaller size of smaller range on their misses, but fully lined faux fur jackets have wide collar with back cape detail lateral pockets. What is that? Lateral. Oh, vertical. Okay. Lateral. That sounds so famous. So fancy. And back pleat. Bag with interior zipper and magnetic zip closure. Love a matching jacket and bag situation. Okay. So you've got a big 
collar with a notch. There's a little baby notch there, I think. I'm pretty sure this is just a grown-on dolman sleeve. Nothing fancy there. Okay, and I know though some of you are thinking, oh, faux fur, I would never wear that. I think you can make this in a lot of different fabrics. I will look at that, what they suggest, and maybe they only suggest fur, but I think you can make it out of a bunch of different things. And I love how they styled it so monochromatic, you know? Like a little bit loose of a fit over top of this very fitted situation. I think we have two lengths as well. So a lateral pocket is really just a welt pocket. That's all it is. And it just goes vertically. This, I don't think this is fur. I think it's just an animal print twill or something. Um, but it is fully lined, which is a lot for a simplicity pattern. You get a lot of bang for your buck there. Very chic. Like, let's go to Aspen. And then here's the bag. Oh, I see. It has some leather details with this fold over snap thing. That is so freaking cool. Oh, that's the, the what they're calling the cape. Why did they put her in a brown outfit? I don't know. The, the vanilla one was just fine. No idea. Also, what is this wall she's standing in front of? Anyway, so they, yeah, that's the little cape thing. Thank you for that. So I want to see something really quick. Yeah, they're not telling us what kind of sleeve that is, but I do think it is all one piece. And I think all of these are the same except for the length, A and B, and then A and B. This is fur. This is not fur. Okay. So, yeah, I wanted to reiterate it. Don't doesn't have to be fur, I don't think. Let's see what they suggest. ABC, faux fur, like fleece, minky fleece, and then tweed wool blends. So, yeah, you can make it out of these other fabrics as well. Um, you could definitely do denim. You could definitely do, um, what did they say? Tweed wool, um, like, a uh, corduroy would be super cool. Um, and then the bag can also be in cotton blends, faux leather, micro suede, and satin. Now they are saying nothing about a contrast, right? Oh, no, no. Here we go. Contrast, but he, oh, contrast C. Okay. Got it now. So they're saying that the bag can be this, and then the contrast can be these things. Okay, got it. I misread that completely. Okay, finished garment measurement, super roomy, roomy, 14 inches of ease. It is a jacket, so you do allow for, like, clothing to be underneath it. Um, it is kind of a boxy style. So, yeah, I kind of get it. That You can see that it's boxy because the bust and the lower width are the exact same. So, for me, being a pear shape, um, I'd have to fit for my hip and then just take whatever bust measurement I get. I can probably grade one size, but that's really not going to make a huge, huge difference in the overall look of it. But hip wise, let's see, 32, 44, there is 12 inches of ease in the hip. You could go down to something like eight to get a little bit more of a fitted look all over. But this is really, this is going to help sell this jacket for sure. I know it's not, you know, groundbreaking, but it's thoughtful and it takes the guesswork out of it for us. And I think that that's really valuable to a lot of home sewists. Okay, look at this one. Mrs. Coat in two lengths, 8 to 16, 18 to 26 on the size range, fully lined, faux fur coat, has shawl collar, Kissing front, which means no buttons, no closures, side seam pockets, and back vent. Okay. Another fully lined coat. This, whatever kind of fur this is, she looks rich. She looks like she has money. She looks like she's bossing people around. She has a driver and a doorman. All of the things. I would never wear this. I have nowhere to go in this. Can you imagine? I guess I technically would go to Target in it, but I mean, that would be a very I'd, rare occasion, probably. And this wouldn't be my everyday, let's grab a coat and go. Now, I don't live in the North. I don't live anywhere super cold. If I lived in like Wisconsin, where I wear a coat every single day, then yeah, I probably would 
have a use for something like this, but currently I do not. There is a shortened version, and this is also um, illustrated in a non faux fur fabric. So, shawl collar. This is the kissing front where there's no closures. You could make a belt if you wanted to, and like wrap it kind of, um, if you wanted to have that option. Here's the back. It has a little vent down here. But again, fully lined for simplicity pricing, that's a really good deal. Faux fur fleece, tweed, and wool types, and then your lining, and then a mid-weight sew-in. So yeah, they're really going all in on the like structure and the like uh, the technical skills of making a proper winter coat. Size wise, we've got nine inches in the bust and about 10 in the hip. That's perfectly reasonable for a coat like this. All right, what is next? This is that, no, it's a completely different coat. The yellow's through me. Mrs. Coat and Jacket. Alphanumeric sizing, all of them are in one, extra small to extra large, you can make one for every person in your family. Relaxed, puffer style coat and jacket have shawl collar, drop shoulders, front button or snaps closure, view A has pockets. Puffer, oh. Okay, yeah, but if you're going to get a puffer jacket, you're going to want Norris's from Nomi from last year, I think. His is way better. This is giving me Paddington, and I know they made it in yellow, and I know that that's also why I'm thinking Paddington, but yeah, it's just giving like a little kid's coat in a woman's body. You know, like the puff, mm, maybe the puff isn't puffing hard enough. So it almost just looks like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of okay idea. I think executed a little bit. They didn't go in hard enough. If you'll look at Norris's puffer jacket, you're like, oh yeah, that looks better. <laughs> um, but it's just a shawl collar, drop shoulder, a couple different um, sections of the sleeve. So you can insert the puff here too. And then buttons with loops or snaps. The, the crop version is really cute. Yeah, it's just not giving puff. It's just giving like a lot of extra seams. I guess maybe you could puff it more. You could stuff it more if you wanted. Go look at Norris's first and then decide. Okay, denim, faux suede, microfiber, nylon poplin, rainwear, sateen. But yeah, I guess so. Yeah, all those mid-weight stable jacketing kind of fabrics for sure um lining but it's not is it fully lined i don't think it's fully lined i think maybe only the sleeves maybe i could be totally wrong i don't know but if the lining is 45 inches and the coat is 45 inches and you need one and something more for the coat then it's not fully lined i get the collar would take up some maybe a facing would take up some Maybe it is fully lined on the body and the sleeves. Hmm. One snap and buttons or for B or also for B more snaps. It's interlined with fleece and not, it's not mentioned in the notions, any fiber fill or anything. So I think it's just like a, it's not really a puffer jacket. It's just like a, like a quilted jacket, honestly. That's really what it seems like to me. Um, okay, finished garment measurements. Bust, waist, and hip are all relatively the same. One extra inch in the hip. So you're going to base this off of the largest part of your body. Um, and it's just going to be big and oversized in some places and not in others unless you are a ruler, which congratulations. Here's a pattern where it's made for your body. <laughs> Okay, they really love those shoes though. They're putting those shoes on everybody. Um, okay. 
Okay. Mrs. Pants. Why did they put... Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. I literally was just doing research yesterday about trends for fall. And puddle pants, which is what this is, are a thing. Now, why they put this illustration in sneakers with a puddle, but then put her in heels... Maybe they got afraid. Maybe the person that was there didn't get the memo on we want these to puddle. But they're, I think the intention is to be puddle pants, which I don't get. They're going to get dirty. Where can you even go in them? The hems are going to come apart. All of that. But look it up. Puddle pants are were on all the runways. They are a thing. I promise. Angled front wrap pants, which you can kind of see here. We'll zoom in. Have waistband with belt carriers, front fly zipper with hook and bar closure, side seam pockets, and back darts. UA has a belt sewn into the side seam and self ties attached to the waistband. So they don't even mention the puddle hem. It seems like they, the designer and the, like after the design was made, the, the, that was not communicated down the pipeline. But. You have, I don't know, this closure up here looks a lot different than this one too, but it's a fly zipper with a hook and bar, which this one has that too, but it also has a tab. And then also this little, whatever tie thing that is, that seems so small and subtle. But I think this is a pleat. I don't think it's like a separately hemmed piece of fabric. I think all of this is wrap around pleat. So I think this fabric choice was wrong. I think that they thought that they were making a trouser, but they're not. They're making something much more lightweight, much more, obviously, drapey, much more ca uh, casual-ish. They did style it well, but then the heel is throwing everything off. I think the fabric from bottom, the fabric and the heel are one person, and then the design and the styling are another person. Do you know what I mean? You should go look up puddle pants and um, the designers that were doing them and see how they styled them and also kind of fabrics that they use. I think they all use pretty much really lightweight suiting fabrics, which this is clearly not. And also, I'm not going to harp on this too much, but the, because I don't know if it's her, it could probably be her body. It does look like she has kind of a curved spine, right? But this is not sitting horizontal to the floor which could also explain why one hem is longer than the others but that could just be the uniqueness of the fit model's body so I'm not like I said I'm not going to harp on that too much because I don't know I don't know really what's going on there okay so cotton blends flannel lightweight twill linen bland blends stretch wovens I wouldn't really recommend any of those. Maybe lightweight twill, linen blends for sure, cotton blends, okay. I think flannel misses the mark, unless it's like a really lightweight flannel. Stretch wovens. Yeah, if it's if it's stretch with a lightweight woven. Because it's got a puddle. It's gotta be drapey. Um I'm really bummed that they kind of missed the mark on communicating that other than that one photo. Like if they hadn't had that picture in there with the sneaker, I'd have been like just any other trouser. But seeing the photo with the sneaker, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. They fully intended to go all in on this trend and then something happened. Or maybe they got scared and said no one's going to make puddle pants. We need to show them like with heels so you can see how diverse they are. I don't know. But they should have made the sample in the puddle pants and then shown us one with the heel maybe I don't know anyways so zipper hook and bar are the only notions that you need and then waist is two inches perfect and the hip has three and a half um, also pretty great you can kind of go up from there if you want to if you want to grade out that would be fine um, but yeah I think this is supposed to be the loop after that, we've got this cutie little top. Okay, sizing is 6 to 14, 16 to 24, easy to sew, knit tops in two lengths, have sleeve and neckline variations, and invisible back zipper closure. On a knit top, 
Okay, view B has a contrast sleeve ruffle. I mean, I get that it's a mock neck, but you should have in your pick a knit rule a stretchy enough fabric that this stretches over your head. It, and then, and then if it doesn't stretch over your head, then the sewist should know to add a zipper. I think I would, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm torn. I get, I, uh, lesser of two evils, I guess, when it comes to that, including the zipper and then educated sewist knows that they can leave it off or no zipper and educated no sewist know that they can add it depending on fabric choice, but it's just like a little mock neck thing. I'm glad we're not doing, uh, what are they called? Body suits. I'm glad that I haven't seen a body suit yet. Um, I think we're kind of past that. Um, just make it long enough to be able to tuck in, but it doesn't have to like close around your body. I do love the flare sleeve and this is the contrast version. You can hardly tell because the colors are so similar, but this is some kind of like maybe ITY knit and this is like a chiffon or something. So pretty, right? That makes it look really elevated and expensive for sure. Some difficulty on the hem here and execution, and I think they even used a cover stitch machine, so just a hard fabric to work with. But are they going to show us the zipper? Yes. Okay. So it's even an invisible zipper. So I don't know if it were exposed, you know, a design detail. Okay. But I think you can just close this all right up and then you should be able to pull this on over your head. ITY is super stretchy with great recovery. Um, so if you have a stretch knit like that, um, you shouldn't need the zipper. If you're using something like a Ponte with no stretch, then you would need the zipper. Let's see what the um, ease looks like. After I look at fabric, stretch knits is jersey, rib, rib knit is for sure going to pull over your head. Stretch velvet, probably not. Sweater knits, it depends. So I would take the zipper as a suggestion. Here's how to do it if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, then you just sew up all the seams and it's the same. So lace, gorge, linen types, shears, which is what they use, silky types for sure. I think that the contrast is such a fun, 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 fun idea. But I also really love like 70s boho. So that also just speaks to me. Um, additionally, you could also just, if you have a mock neck uh, knit top in your stash, just replace the cuffs with these things. You don't have to go buy this pattern just for that. Nothing else about this pattern is special. Okay, and then zipper or no zipper, you do you. Okay, so... We do have positive ease. We have one inch of positive ease in the bust and four inches in the waist. So you can make this top with no stretch. Mm, minimal stretch. You can make this top with minimal stretch and you would need the zipper and you wouldn't need the zipper. If you're gonna make it out of something super stretchy and not need the zipper, you might consider sizing down one even if you want to get like a more fitted look. But yeah, you can see hers is pretty roomy. Did they give us any other poses from her? No. Oh, that one. Yeah. You can see how roomy it is, right? How it's, remember Mimi's? How Mimi's was like, there's no, there's no bubbles, ruffles, nothing. It was in on her body. And this one's not. This is cute. I'm going to steal this idea. I'm definitely going to make something like that this fall but from a pattern I already have. Probably the Nico top, I think. That one has sleeves, right? I can't remember. Um, okay. Now they got into some adaptive stuff, which I really love. Sewn Adaptive is the one, uh, the designer behind all of these. I'm not gonna look at any of these because I, I don't really know, I don't understand it, honestly. I'm really naive when it comes to it. I don't know anybody who would need any of this. I don't know. I just don't have anybody in my life to talk to about this. So I don't want to speak ignorantly about it, but I will point out that they do have these now, which I do think is incredible. Awesome. Long time coming. Um, and you know, cute little, I guess this is the, the jeans and this is the jacket. I mean, he looks great. 
Costumes we're not going to go over. Similarly, I don't make costumes. I don't know anyone who makes costumes. I cannot speak on them other than they look like incredible to make. But other than like just the aesthetics of them, I don't know what I'm looking at. More costumes. Remember, this is fall. So we're looking at Halloween. This is why there's so many costumes here. Um, these little toddler ones are funny. And then we've got microwavable cozies. Please do not buy this pattern for this. You can buy, find these online, a dime a dozen. Maybe not the casserole one, okay? Maybe that one's unique. But these little bowl cozies, I think I even have a tutorial on them on my channel, to be honest. Um, seasonal throw pillows. These little plush pets. So cute. I had a sewing student who was wanting to make something similar to this. She's kind of like an artist and wants to get into textile arts. And so she was looking for patterns that were uh, kind of a nod to these ones that she had seen online that people are selling. Literal things like this with like cute little details or whatever. $70, $90, $120 people are charging for one stuffy. So if you've got some time on your hands check it out. I was like, what? I cannot believe they're getting that much money for a stuffed animal. But because they're like more artistic, um, I guess they can charge more for them. I was just shocked. Um, okay. You can do little stuffed snakes. Interesting. Um, another take on aprons for Thanksgiving. Okay. Now we're at the vintage patterns. This is a 1970s vintage pattern, which I just said I'm into the seventies boho. Unlined jackets. Oh, wait, what are the sizes? 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Unlined jacket, skirt, wide leg pants, sewing pattern. The wide leg pants and the six gourd flared skirt, amazing, have back zipper and waistband. The jacket with long or short set in sleeves gathered to armholes has shawl collar and optional button trim or chain and button closure. Chain and button closure, cute. The sleeves feature slits, which can be turned back and trimmed with buttons. Oh my gosh. Okay. They used so many words back then. Um, so it's like a cute little cropped jacket with a shawl collar. And then you can do this little chain detail if you want. Did it say the top two? I already forgot. Um, and then the pants, which look to have, they didn't even say, they had to use so many words in that description and then leave out so much information. The zipper, I think, is maybe a side zip. No idea. Um, the six gourd skirt, stunning, looks beautiful, literally on every single body type. Um, yeah. Oh, and then this is where you can, oh, I'm oh, sorry, the gathered sleeve head, they did mention that. And then this is the sleeve. All of them have this little slit. Do you see? All of them have this little slit. And then some of them you can turn back with a button, turn back with a button for like an extra detail. Stinking cute. Yes, ma'am. So sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the illustrations are everything. Okay. So, yeah, just the jacket and the skirt. We'll look at line drawings in a second because they always have more details than you can even see in the illustrations. So, fabrics, chambray, chalet, chino, cotton knit. Interesting. Double knit, okay, gabardine, which is kind of like suiting, lightweight wool, linen, poplin, silk linen, excuse me, Syrah, which is always mentioned in these vintage ones. I've never seen it in real life. Tweed, wool crepe, wool flannel. And then interfacing. Um, notions are a 7-inch zipper, seam binding, which means I probably your pant or skirt facing is trimmed with something, which is pretty. The jacket has probably Hong Kong seams, maybe. That's what this binding is for. And then buttons, chain and button closure, or more buttons, depending on which sleeve and front jacket closure you're using. Body measurements are going to be, the finished garment, I'm saying that ease is going to be on the uh, pattern instructions. So we can't really look at that here. But again, for any kind of waistband, you're looking around two inches, and then the skirt's going to, not matter, I don't think, but the pants should have like three or four, then the jacket should be pretty fitted as well. But I want to look at this. Okay, okay, so front, plain, nothing going on. 
The back has one single dart on each side. Not very conducive for curvy figures. If you have a pear shape, you're probably going to have to do a lot of work to these pants. But it does have a back lap zipper or centered zipper. And then the jacket, I don't know, this bolero type jacket is really kind of amazing even without the pants. Like just swap in some other pants. But the gathered little sleeve head is just so cute because look at it. It's like a triangle, right? So you're widening your shoulders and you're narrowing your waist. And then when you wear the pants and you're widening your hips. So you get this hourglass. But I love how this also mimics an hourglass. And then this just is such a sweet detail. But to make it so fitted, you've got shoulder darts, you've got back waist darts, and elbow darts. So it's fitted, but you can move around in it. It's really incredible. That's a really, really great little jacket pattern. And, I mean, at Simplicity Prices, just get it for the jacket, if nothing else. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it, personally. We don't see jackets designed like this hardly anymore at all. Maybe, maybe in Vogue. Maybe. Okay, where was I? Vintage. All the way down here. All right, next up, another 70s. Mrs. Dress with front wrap skirt and scarf. 8 to 16, 18 to 26. Dress with front wrap skirt and scarf sewing pattern. The dress with front, the dress with front wrap skirt softly gathered to bodice has bag zipper, stand up collar, long set in sleeves. How? Dress with a front wrap zip, front wrap skirt. How? How? Version 1 features embroidered braid or ribbon trim. Version 2 has top stitching and button trim. Version 3 has button trim. Version 4 with contrasting skirt and scarf features fringe trim. Version 5 has contrasting skirt. Versions 2, 3, and 4, and 5 have <laughs> purchase belts. Okay, I think it's just faux. It's not real. This might be an extra like layer of fabric on the front but it doesn't come undone. Like it comes undone here, but not at the waist. You just get in and out of it here. But again, look at all of these details. Okay, let's look at these. Oh. Okay. Did it say, I'm lost. Did it say it was for knits? No, it's all wovens, I think. Let's go to the back first. Just so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Shally Crepe Double Knit Flannel, Homespun, Hop Sacking, no idea what that is, Jersey, Lightweight Wool, Linen PK, PK would be great. Polyester Knit, Poplin, and Silk Linen again. And then you can do a contrast skirt. Um, okay, and then it talks about like strikes and stuff. Okay, so with that in mind, this is all woven fabrics. So for this, mock neck you would need a zipper because it has no stretch to it um not entirely my fave design mm, and I don't really know why I mean this is cute enough but maybe because it at the end of the day it still is a fit and flare dress you know I don't know I guess if I found the right most perfect fabric Maybe? Hmm. Yeah, but none of these designs are really jumping out at me. I guess that one's probably the cutest. Um, and I guess for our weather here, I could, I would probably wear something like this and be able to wear it like on the coldest day. You know what I mean? Like I really don't have to get more covered up, no, no more layers than that. So that's an interesting thought. If you found like a really cool textured something, obviously like a sweater knit, I guess, because you're going to make the scarf out of something textured and soft and right. Like you wouldn't make this out of brocade. That would be so weird, but you would make it out of like, I don't know, some kind of like textured tweed or a sweater knit, like I said. So you can make it out of what are considered knitted fabrics, but with no stretch. 
And then you found like a little contrasting but coordinating little top to go with it. Hmm, interesting. You can also just get a wrap skirt though and then put it in a tank top and not have to, not a tank top, but like a, a turtleneck and then not have to worry about the matchy matchy of it all. I think I really just like the idea of the scarf and the skirt matching. I don't really love the idea of the entire garment. Yeah. It's interesting, but not for me, I think. I can see some people, though, like if you work in an office, maybe getting a lot of wear out of that. Being able to throw something on that's coordinated and you, but not a, not all the same top to bottom and you still look together, I think that's really valuable for people who are short on time. Okay, so I already read all of those. You need, I don't even know what all of these notions. Um, but it looks like seam binding, a zipper, belting stuff, um, embroidered trim, um, a lot of buttons, buttons, fringe trim, lots of stuff. And then the finished garment measurements are in the instructions. So yeah, okay, but only like okay. In IMO, as the kids say. Actually, I don't think kids say that at all. Um, I'm just old. Okay, so next stop, 1950s skirt, sizing, 8 to 16, 18 to 26. The flared skirt is four gourd and has a zipper back closing. View one has raised waistline. Views one and two have large patch pockets. Views two and three have a waistband at upper edge of skirt. Where else would the waistband be? Saddle stitching, saddle stitching trims pockets. That's fun. Okay, I don't understand the waistband part. Oh, oh, this one's like a, the waist, the, what am I trying to say? It's not a waistband, but it has like a facing on the inside, which finishes the top of it. So not an actual separate band. I think that's what they mean. And it has huge patch pockets. Those are fun. I love this type of, of um, waist line, waist design. I have some pants that were like this and then you wear like a little cropped sweater over it. It's so cute. She's just covered hers up with a belt so I can't tell what's happening, but this is the, the little stitching that they're talking about. And then there it is without um, any pockets, but you can see there's four panels. They're all, they all make kind of circle skirts. And then there's also four darts per front. And then in the back, how many darts? Just two. Yep. So view one, even plaid or plain fabric, cotton rayon taffeta wool. View two is cotton denim faux fur. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Rayon and wool. And view three is corduroy cotton veil wool. Lining is optional. And then hair canvas for the lining or for the interfacing to make that really big hem, which is also optional in my opinion. Lining being optional though, <laughs> I've never seen that before. Um, you must not need much of it. Yeah, half a yard of 45 inch lining. I guess you could use your self fabric. I don't really know how they're getting away with that. But also like, why can't you use denim for view one? You know, I don't know the difference in that, but here I'll show you the waists again. So see how this one is like, shoop, shoop. There's not an actual band. It is really pretty and it still stays up. It still definitely stays up. And then you've got one dart in the back. And then this is the one with the actual waistband. But I think you could probably make all of these out of any of those fabrics they mentioned. I don't really understand why they separated them like that. Okay, now, was that the end of this page? There are a lot of patterns. My gosh, yes. Because we have a little girl's. Look at that cool detail, though. I want that. So cute. Please make that in adults if you're listening. Oh, one of one. That's it. Okay. So that is the end of Simplicity's fall 
sewing pattern collection. What did we think? I feel like I was either like mediocre, meh, about it, or I really liked it. There was nothing bad. There was nothing exceptional. Just all middle of the road, like B's and C's in terms of grades. Um, not a lot of stuff I need. Not a lot of stuff I have to have or slash really want. Um, but some interesting ideas. If you're new to sewing, for sure you're going to like a lot more of them than I do because you just don't have them in your stash yet, which I totally get. Um, but yeah, just sort of like, okay, not very memorable, good or bad, right? So anyways, I want to know what you guys think. Please leave a comment um, down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you're going to pick up. Let me know if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. I don't care. Leave it in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.